In honor of this week finally being race week, I've decided to make an F1 video, and the premise is a little bit strange, and it's definitely not an idea that I've stolen from someone who definitely didn't do the video better than I'm going to do it, and whose name isn't Unta Untas Un Untas Fast Fled. To be fair, that probably isn't actually his name, but it was his idea that I'm using, although I am changing it up a bit. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a 10 race season, but each race, the point system is going to be a bit messed up. And at the end of each race, I'm going to spin this wheel and that will decide which point system is going to be used for that race. However, I'm going to do that when I'm editing. So I don't actually know how the championship's going to look as the season's going on. So the point systems that I'm going to be using across the season are normal points, reverse normal points, meaning last will get 25 and 11th place will get one. Position points, so whatever position you're in, you get that many points. Reverse position points, double points. Minus 10 points for every driver that finishes the race, and you get plus 10 points if you DNF in that race. IRL race points, so however many points each driver got in the real race in the 2021 season, they'll get that many points here. Split points outside in, which means the points will go from 1st to 10th, be 25 to 1 like normal, and then from 11th to 20th, it'll go 1 to 25. And then split points inside out is the same, but the other way around. So it'll go 1 to 25 from 1st to 10th, and then 25 to 1 from 11th to 20th. And the last one is shuffling the positions. So what I'll do for that, I'll look at the position they actually finished in the race from 1 to 20, and then just shuffle that, and then I'll get another random list where each of those numbers will be in a list of 1 to 20, and whichever one of those numbers corresponds to what position they finished in, in the new list. So for example, say I've shuffled it, and 10 is now at 1. Whoever finished 10th place in that race will get the points that whoever finishes first will usually get, so they'll get 25, and so on from that. So there are all the point systems we're going to use during this season. So I'm going to do it on a driver career with a random team, just going to use a random number generator to choose that so i'm going to create that career and you can just ignore the name of my team which has just been on here this whole time i've been explaining that so i've selected a 10 race season here and i'm going to use a random number generator to choose each of the 10 tracks i'm going to be at so i'm just going to put one to 24 in random number generator and each of those numbers is going to correspond to this list so for example bahrain one imola two portugal three and so on so the first one is australia and that bodes well because that is one of my least favorite tracks the next one is france then it's austria then it's monza then it's zanvor and then the next one is saudi arabia then we got Mexico, then we got Portugal, then we got Canada, and the last one is Spa. So looking at this, it's not too bad. I have managed to escape Monaco, which is a good thing. Although we have got other cursed circuits on this game like Portugal and Zanvoort. But overall, not the worst selection of races. So I'm just going to be doing one shot qualifying with short races just to get through this quickly. I'm going to keep R&D on, which will make it more interesting. And to make it a bit more challenging, I'm going to have recovery mode off, no flashbacks, car damage and damage rate both on simulation, and low fuel mode on hard. And the AI difficulty will be 85 if you're interested, because that's what I play on. And those are all the settings, so I guess let's get into choosing our team. Actually, I've got to create my driver before I choose my team. I hate Mick Schumacher for the fact he's got number 47, because that's my favourite number and I can't be it. All the other numbers around it are alright, but 47's taken. Oh, and obviously 44. So I'll go for 74, which is just the reverse of that. Oh, and also my name is Games Billiv, because I don't want my surname to come up as Games on the leaderboards and stuff, so... Makes more sense if it comes up as Bill to me. And now it's time to select my team, and I'm just going to do a random number generator between 1 and 10 to see who I've got. I really hope it's not like 8, 9, or 10. It's 9. I'm with Williams. This is going to be a fun season. I want my teammate to be Latifi, because I might actually beat him. Right, so we don't have a race until the 29th of April, so I've got a bit of time to do some R&D. To hopefully make the car at least slightly competitive by the time we get to the first race. And I have no upgrades on pretty much anything, so I shouldn't be hard to improve. I actually have a pretty decent powertrain, so it's aero and chassis that are going to get the upgrades. Well, we're finally at the first race now, after almost two months. And our car is still really bad, but we're a little bit closer to Alfa Romeo. So let's get into this first race at Portimao. Although it's called Algarve International Circuit. Let's go race in Portugal. Right, I'm not going through all practice. So I'm just going to do the quick practice. Oh, because I haven't done any practice. I don't know if I'm... I'll, I'll keep on balance, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be really bad for me. Oh, I've got ghosts on. That's annoying because they're just like in the way and they distract me. Oh, God, yeah, this car doesn't handle that great. And it's quite slow as well. For stopping, you see him just flying off. I've got to be careful not to leave the track at all as well, because if any of you have played F1 2021, you'll know that if you leave the track at all on Portugal, that is your race over. Your wheels will not regain traction. You touch one blade of grass and the track becomes ice. Honestly, to be fair, this Williams isn't actually as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it was going to handle like a boat, but it only handles like a large truck and not a boat, so it's not too bad. 
Although I went 12th, so that's pretty good in a Williams. Now it's time for the race. So it is called Portimao here, but it was also called something else. This, this circuit got like eight names or something. And it's lights out and away we go on the opening race of the season in Portugal. And people are already accelerating away from me. This always happens to me. Does this happen to anyone else? Like, you'll get like off the line quicker. I've already damaged my fucking side pods by going over that bump. I forgot I had simulation damage. Like the acceleration off the line, you're quicker. But then they always just get faster than you. Like you get off the line quicker, but then they just accelerate and get to top speed way quicker. Always happens to me no matter what car I'm in and I don't understand it. I got someone alongside me. Oh god, that's a poor turn. And Alonso's just gonna go straight past me. That was so poor from me. And I've got damage. damage. I've been tapped. I think that was probably my fault. I'm really not used to driving with simulation damage. I've got to be so careful not to touch anything. I've already made the mistake and give myself floor damage by going to that bump at the start. I really want to stay within a second of Alonso so that... Taken some damage. You may start I already know that, Jeff. I've not spoken for like a whole lap, and as soon as I start speaking, you interrupt me. As I was saying before Jeff interrupted me, I want to stay within a second of Alonso so I can get DRS, but I don't think I'm going to be able to because we're only going to get two laps of DRS on this. It's five lap races. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get to within a second of Alonso considering I've only got 15% battery already. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, each race I'm just going to try and do as best I can and finish as high as I can because I'm not going to know what the point system I've used is until I actually come to edit this video. This is going to mean that like I don't spoil it for myself and I won't find out until the end how, how everyone's done. So I can't like manufacture a fake championship or something. Portugal's also such an annoying circuit because you just don't gain back any battery. I'm about to start lap 5 and I've gained like... 10% from the start of lap 2 or 3 or something. Oh god, I just realised Ocon is closing quite close to me. He might get DRS on this stretch here. So, by the end, he might actually be able to catch me. God, Ocon is right up behind me now. The gap to the car ahead is 5 .0 I don't seconds. care about the car ahead. That was I've just been given a penalty for track limits because I was paying too much attention to Ocon. I've just got to finish 2 seconds ahead of Giovinazzi now. I'm so tempted to just, like, sideswipe Ocon here. But there we go, that's the end of the first race, and I think we were 12th on the race. Would have been 13th at the end, so not too bad considering, but I have no idea where that's actually going to put us. So now we're going to spin the wheel and see what point system we're going to be using to score this race. And it's landed on shuffle positions, and these were the finishing positions for the first race. And when I shuffled them, this is the list I got. So that means this is the points table after the first race. It's not often you see people like Sonoda and Mazepin that high in real life. Again, very big breaking into the last chicane. And the champion of wall is waiting for us. And now we're into qualifying here in Canada. So let's hope I can put in a good lap here and put myself in a good position on the starting grid. And that has gone really badly to start off with. That was so poor. I've lost so much time by going on the grass there. Oh my God. This car is so slow through chicanes. I'm last. But yeah, I almost binned it into the wall there. Oh god, I'm waiting. I'll get to the wall of champions and I'll bin it. I can already see it. Oh, I've almost binned it into the wall. I said I almost would, or I would, but that's 20th on the grid. Not very good. Good day today. Let's have your Are you on. sure about that? I'm last on the Jimmy grid. Is your biggest rival at the moment. Seriously, I've just finished last of the grid and it's given me people like Fernando Alonso to choose my rival. And now we're at the start of the second race here on the grid in Canada and we're in full wets. So... This could be a very interesting race indeed. And this first turn is going to be very dangerous because I'm not good at corner one or turn one in any race because I always misjudge the break and go into the back of people. And that'll be especially bad in the wet and with simulation damage. And I've almost spun out already. I'm be I'm so like scared. Oh my God, I've spun. And I've damaged my wing by tapping the wall ever so slightly there. Well, this race has gone really well to start off with. I think I can already say I'm coming last in this race because I'm going to need to box because in full wet conditions with a yellow wing, this is going to be impossible as anything. I've just got to not like destroy my car by the time I get to the pits. Well, I've just done my pit stop and I'm already 30 seconds down on Mazepin. So I can see myself potentially being lapped this race. I mean, it would be quite a job for Verstappen to gain like a minute to lap me, but I won't put it past him considering how I spun on turn two. I've already put in a faster sector one and I came out of the pits this lap. That shows how poor I was that first lap. I've just done a proper sector one and I was only 1.5 seconds up on the sector I did coming out of the pits. Right, so it's lap three and I've actually been able to put in a proper lap and it's only 2.6 seconds up on my lap, which I came out of the pits on. So that must have been a really poor lap. My God, I've somehow managed to go worse in that sector than the previous lap, even though the previous lap was awful. I'm not having a good race here. 
Oh, and Verstappen's already finished. Nice. Just give me 20 minutes and I'll be there. Now, as we round the final corner, and I do cut the corner slightly, we're going to come across the line on the final lap, and I get my personal fastest lap, but it was still like two seconds slower than Verstappen's fastest lap, I think. And I come last, so that's not great. But it could end up being good for me because I could end up getting one of the good point systems on the shuffle. So I don't know if it's going to be good or bad at this point. I just got to hope I get lucky with the point system. So let's hope I do get lucky as I spin the wheel here. And the point system I'm going to get is split points inside out. And as you can see here in the second column, these were the finishing positions in that race, which has meant I've been very unlucky and I've only got one point for this race. And as you'll see here, these are the points that everyone got for this race. So now we go from things looking like this after the first race to now looking like this after the second race. No. And now we've got qualifying here for the third race of the season in France. So hopefully I can put in a good lap here. And that's a good start going wide on the first corner. And then going wide on the second corner as well. So I've started really well here to put myself in 19th as it stands. And France is definitely a track which favours cars that can take a high speed corner well. And favours fast cars. And that's not necessarily this car. Although I've done a lot of improvements to it. And I'm sitting 14th at the minute now. Definitely didn't cut the corner there. Didn't even gain anything from it though, so there was no point. I hate that corner because I never know how much to break or accelerate and I always end up like going really slow or too quick around it. Same with this corner here. Some of the corners on France, are, they're not really like difficult to take. It's just difficult to perfect it. They've got the long sweeping corners. You're never sure whether they're a high speed or a low speed corner. But it looks like I might be able to put myself 14th on the grid here. So that's not an awful performance. Well, we've got a race in the wet here and everyone's starting on slicks. So that's an interesting one. I'm going to have to be very careful going into turn one, especially careful, even more careful than I would usually have to be in the wet, I think, because on slicks, this could be dangerous. And I've hit Ocon and I've somehow not managed to get any damage there, which is lucky. But I am slightly worried about doing this wet race here on slicks. Although I have done a, like a nice little double overtake there on Ocon and I've taken damage from it. And I've immediately noticed that's affecting my downforce because I really struggle around that corner. I just got to get my battery on and hope I can stay ahead of Ocon here. Managed to stay ahead of Ocon there. Defended him fairly well, I think. Also, I've been threatened with retirement because of my MG UK, so that's a risk. And also, Ocon's trying to go down the inside of me there, and he has done it. Oh, God, there's someone else there. I was about to go and try go and overtake Ocon again, but then someone else came up the inside of me. Who is it? I think it's Stroll. Yeah, it is. I need to stay with Ocon here. I hope DRS is on. I know it's wet, but we're not in. We're not using wet tyres. So does that mean this conditions? The conditions are acceptable for DRS. Hopefully it does. See, in a straight line, this car's actually pretty decent. Because I know I've got my ERS deployed, but I've gained about what two tenths on Ocon there, maybe more down the straight. My car's like fairly quick. It's just not great anywhere else. But I'm sticking with Ocon fairly well here. So hopefully they'll activate DRS and I can able to get potentially closer to him and potentially pass him. DRS will be enabled this lap. DRS is enabled, so that's good. Although I've gone wide here, which won't help me. So I've just lost like loads of time on Ocon there, which it would have been useful to have to be able to get past him. Because the straight is basically the only opportunity I've got, I'm pretty sure. I right, got the battery on, getting the slipstream. Hopefully I'm, I'm looking four temps gain on him here. Or if, unless he has DRS on Vettel. I don't think he does. I think I did get about four temps gain on in there and my vibrations just cut out my controller, which means that's about to die, which isn't good. I hope it doesn't die during the race and I end up crashing or something. I'm gaining pretty quick on Ocon here. I can see movements happening ahead of me, ahead of Ocon even. Can I dive down the inside of Ocon? Just can't quite pull it off and I've taken out a, like a cone or whatever was on the inside of the corner. But I did gain a lot on Ocon there. Although he is gaining on the people in front because they've been fighting. So he might get DRS on them now. And Stroll is gaining on me as well. Although I am very close behind Ocon now. But he's going to have DRS on the people in front. So I don't think I'll be able to get past him now, which is annoying. Stroll might get past me here, though. He's not going to do it here, but he is very close behind me now. So I'm going to do a good job to defend against Stroll here. I'm getting really affected by the dirty air and my underbody damage here, I think. So I'm really struggling on that corner. And Ocon is quite far ahead of me now and he's going to have DRS. So I don't think I'm going to catch him. So now my worry, my worry has to be not letting Stroll overtake me. So as we round the final corner here, I'm not going to be able to catch Ocon, but I don't think Stroll's going to be able to catch me. So I think that is 14th place secured for this race in France, which is a decent result, I think. So let's hope that decent finishing position can secure me some good points when I spin the wheel.
and it's just landed on split points outside in. I thought it was going to land on normal points and I was worried, but this isn't too bad. Would have preferred it last race though. So as you can see in the third column here, these were the finishing positions for this race. And that means these are the points that all the drivers got for this race. And as you'll see, this hasn't really helped me at all because the table has gone from this to this, meaning that I'm the only driver who's still in single figure points. So I really could have done with the last two races, the point systems being the other way around because I would have got significantly more points. But it's still creating an interesting championship already. Sonoda and Mazepin are the top two, and I think Sonoda's been top the whole time. And we've got people like Verstappen, Norris and Leclerc all down near the bottom as well. But anything could happen. Okay, what damage do you have? Talent. And now we're in qualifying for the fourth race of the season in Austria. And I'm pretty strong on this track, so I'm hoping for a good result here. Although I have forgot to change my batteries and having no vibration in my controller is genuinely a hindrance to me. Gone a little bit wide there, which won't help my time. I was doing a pretty good lap as well. I was almost up in 10th at one point. Well, I think I'm going to be in 15th here, which is actually quite poor for me. I should have done better on Austria, but I'm blaming having no vibration in my controller. Now we've got the fourth race of the season here in Austria. And I'm hoping for a good race, as I mentioned in the qualifying. Austria is one of my stronger tracks, so I'm hoping to have a good race in this one. The first quarter in Austria is always quite dangerous, though I have managed to do pretty well and get past a couple of people there. Although I've not got a very quick car, so I can't maintain my position on Sonoda. And I'm not going to be able to stay on the outside of them. I'm going to dive up the inside here, up the inside of everyone, try and avoid contact. And I've done so well, and I've managed to put myself up into 12th place here. You try and dive up the inside of Vettel here. That was brave. That was stupid. And he stayed ahead of me. And he's gained time on me. Yeah, that was not a good idea. I've got Ocon up the inside of me here, so I'm going to have to give him space. He's managed to get past me, but... Oh, I've gone way too wide there. And then someone else just got on the inside of me. I think it's Sonoda. All those places I gained, I've just lost them. I'm going to dive up the inside of Sonoda here. Maybe a little bit dirty. I've absolutely clattered into him. Didn't take damage somehow, and I managed to get past him, so I'll take it. And now it's Ocon again in front of me. I feel like I'm going to be plagued by Ocon for this whole video. But I'm going to have DRS on Ocon here, but he's going to have DRS on everyone in front of him. I think everyone up this straight is going to have DRS, to be honest. Your Ocon's getting away from me, and Stroll is catching me. It's Stroll and Ocon either side of me again. I didn't get DRS on Ocon, I've just realised. Oh, God. <laughs> if I don't keep DRS on him, that's going to be really bad for me. I've not got DRS, and I've not got enough battery to defend from Stroll. That wasn't English. I've not got enough battery to defend from Stroll. He's gone on the inside, which I didn't want him to do there. So I'm going to have to break late. And that was stupid. I've lost my wing. I've messed this up completely. Stroll has straightened me up a bit, though. Yeah, that wasn't good. Less box. Although I have slowed down everyone behind me. And hopefully one of them's got damage, so uh, they'll have to box. Actually, if I don't box, I've got more chance of holding a higher position, I think. So if I box, I'll definitely be last. But if I don't box, I've got a chance of holding other people behind me. Because Giovinazzi is just getting slower and slower. So I, he must have damage. He must have hit me and he's got damage. So if I stay out with this broken wing, I should be able to stay ahead of them. Although they've all overtaken Giovinazzi now, because he's gone into the pits, I assume. And they're all going to catch me. I've just got to say, try and stay three seconds ahead of them all. I don't know if that's going to happen. And when it comes to them overtaking me, it's going to be quite dangerous. I don't know if that's to do with him hitting me or not. I've got Sonoda right behind me now. And my turning circle is not good enough. I can't hold him off. Schumacher's gone past me. And now Mazepin's gone past me as well. So, yeah, I was never going to hold them off. But I think Raikkonen and Latifi must have pitted. Damn, I was so close to holding them three off. Couple corners from the end, I just couldn't manage it. And I'm going to end up coming home in 17th. And it's kind of my own fault, really, for hitting the back of Ocon. But I was trying to defend from Stroll. So the point system I'll be using to score that race will be the IRL race points. And as you'll see in the fourth column here, these were the finishing positions for this race. And with that point system, it meant that these were the points for this race, because that's how many points each driver got in real life at the Austrian Grand Prix. And that means the table goes from this after race three to this now after race four. And as you can see, I've still been a bit stiffed by it because I'm the only one still with single figure points. So let's hope that improves at some point. And now we are qualifying for the fifth race of the season in Spa. Or is it the sixth? I think it might be the sixth actually. I think the fifth is in Austria. It's the qualifying for the sixth race of the season in Spa. And Ricardo is currently on provisional pole at the start of this, but you know, there's a long lap to go. <laughs> And I am in a Williams, which George Russell managed to put on third in real life in Spa, but um, I'm 20th at the minute, so I have a feeling that's not going to happen. Oh, I've gone so wide there. Although I've still managed to retain 10th. 
I saw that I was 10th and I thought going wide there would drop me back so many places, but it's not done so. Although going along here has because this is a really quick bit of the circuit, so the faster cars will have gained a lot on me here. But as we round the final corner, I'm coming up to the line in 11th place, although I have dropped to 12th and I've qualified 12th there, which isn't too bad. If I hadn't gone wide on that corner though, I think I maybe could have gone a little bit higher. Yeah, I had to lift off a bit when I went to that corner so I didn't hit the wall. So I think I maybe could have lost maybe a tenth or two there. So I probably could have put myself in tenth if I hadn't had to do that. And now at Spa, we have another wet race here. And um, we all know about wet race in Spa after last season, after there was just one lap under one or two laps behind the safety car. Oh God, I've out of the race already. That was so stupid from me. I am stupid. <laughs> I was too busy recounting last year's race and now I'm out of the race. It's tempting to restart the session, but that'd be cheating. So I've got to retire from the session. So we're not going to race at Spa. So let's see how the race ended. Verstappen looks like he won. My teammate, the Tifi, only beat Mazepin. And the three last people put in fastest laps over two minutes, which is slow. So I didn't quite manage the real life performance that uh, the Williams that wasn't Nicholas Latifi did in Spa. I didn't quite get second on the grid. Instead, I DNF'd. And now ideally I'd want to get the minus 10 finish plus 10 DNF points. So let's see what I get. And I've ended up with normal points, which doesn't help me at all. And those were the finishing positions after the race in Spa, which meant that these were the points that were allocated after that race, which meant the table went from this after race four to this after race five. And it does change around quite a bit. But as you see, we are still rooted to the bottom on seven points. So I continue to be quite unfortunate with how the points are falling. But anyway, as you'll be able to see, this video has gone on for quite a while and I'm only halfway through the season. So I'm going to have to split this video up into two parts. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you don't want to miss that next part, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.